Well, the month of January is coming to an end and as a new year comes by, we have so many more games and of course a lot of more games are coming later this year. But there are a few games that are coming this very month. One of them is something that I'm very much excited since I'm a horror fan and it's really awesome to play horror games. I'm sorry for those of you guys who are very scared of horror games. This might not be the one for you. But this game is called The Medium. This game is made by the same team who made the game such as Layers of Fear, Observer or even Blair Witch. The Medium is going to come in Xbox and PC only, which means it's an Xbox exclusive. I'm sorry Sony fanboys, this game is just not for you. This game is also coming in Xbox Game Pass, which means you don't have to technically buy the game in Steam, you can just play it in Xbox Game Pass by paying that subscription fee. Well, I know that everybody knows about this game since we are very close to the release date, but there is a question. Is the medium somewhat of a spiritual successor to Silent Hill? First of all, the medium takes place in Poland and you are Marianne, who has this psychological ability and you're trying to deal with it and not only that, use it to find out what's happening in the story or in the game as the story progresses. The ability allows her to be in two worlds at the same time, one being the real world and the other is the spirit world. This is very similar to Silent Hill where you are in a world with monsters, a world very different from the real world and not only that, the way that world is depicted with the colors of orange, you know how it's grungy and orange color, is the same in the spirit world of the medium and that's why the similarity comes across for the first time ever between medium and Silent Hill. However, the most important thing about this game is how you can see both the worlds at the same time. It's kind of a split screen kind of technique that they've used in this game and majority of this game is actually going to be in that same level. Of course, it might get annoying a little bit so that's why the game then shifts to only one world at a time. What's more interesting is how Marianne has these abilities that she can use to communicate with certain someone. That certain someone is a ghost or a monster in the other side of the world. As we saw in the gameplay demo, Marianne was talking with Sadness, which is a girl that she is able to see and only she is able to see. So if any outside person just walks in and sees her talking to thin air, he would be like, what the fuck woman? I, what, what happened to you? Please take yourself to a mental hospital first of all. But in her perspective, she's talking to this child who is in the spirit world. Along with that, Marianne has much more abilities such as shield and energy blast that can help her solve various amount of puzzles and help her move forward if she's stuck at any point in time. She can even have an out of body experience where the soul leaves the body so that she can find something to help her in the real world. But this soul starts fading away since the body is still alive. So you cannot stay as spirit for long since your body is still alive somewhere so you have to go back to the body to regain your soul strength. These are some really cool additions that Silent Hill just did not have because in Silent Hill you're going with guns and just shooting monsters. But in here, you're not doing that. You're not killing someone. It's one of those horror games that you don't kill someone. Rather, you solve puzzles and you hide if possible. And that's why this game is not relying at all on jump scares. This game is more relying on puzzles, how the world is and how you have to navigate from one point to the other point to solve these puzzles and to get to know what the story is. And that's why you can only hide from the monster. But if you get caught, you can use the energy blast to somewhat get away from the hold of him and then go away. Now this monster walks in both the worlds, the real and the spirit world. In the spirit world, you will be able to see the monster, but in the real world, you cannot see him, other than some form of an apparition. Now this makes it more scary because you just don't know where he is. I mean, you can see a little bit of an apparition based on the, the, the light that is falling on him. But apart from that, you can only navigate yourself through sound and you have to distract him. You cannot get in contact with him, otherwise he'll catch you. Out of all of this, the very big important thing that makes the media very very similar to the Silent Hill is the composer of the game. The music of this game is composed by the legendary Akira Yamakoa. I'm sorry about the name, I might have butchered it, but this guy has made or composed the music for all the Silent Hill games. I believe so all, but at least Silent Hill 2, 3 and even 1. Now that makes it more interesting because Silent Hill did have a really awesome taste of music and you can feel it right here. One more thing that Silent Hill did and a lot of other games in that time did as well including Resident Evil was having a fixed camera position. It won't be a third person or first person perspective, it will be a fixed camera perspective and the medium is actually following just like that. Since the game is in a fixed camera perspective, the game must be heavy or filled with a good atmosphere and that is exactly what this game is having as well. Which brings chills down the spine and it is very important that this atmosphere is built that way. Interestingly, the monster who is named Maw in this game is voiced by none other than 
Troy Baker, who has voiced in characters such as Joel, Joker, and many more. I forgot the name. I'm sorry, I forgot all his characters' name. But so out of all the characters he could have been, he became a monster, which is very interesting to me. This monster has lots of negative feeling and that's why it tries to chase you. At least that's what I assume. According to Bluebird team, they wanted this game to make it feel more cinematic and that's one of the reasons why this game has no HUD at all. Mostly because the game will have split screens and having HUD would just be horrible for everybody because you won't be able to see anything. But again, they wanted to make a game which is very similar to the style of 90s horror games and that's exactly what we are seeing here. Well, it's gonna be very hard to say whether the medium is actually a spiritual successor or they're actually very much inspired by Silent Hill or no. But what we do know is that Bluebird team do have some experience with horror games. They have made Layers of Fear, Blair Witch, Observer. Those are very good games, so I'm pretty much sure that they will make justice or bring justice to this game the way they want to and bring that feel of horror, psychological horror in my opinion, the way Resident Evil or Silent Hill 2 had. At least I can say that this game won't suck. Maybe at some portion it will, but I think majority of it won't suck. It will be a very good horror game, in my opinion at least. So what do you think about the medium? Let me know in the comments below. Do you think that it is somewhat of a spiritual successor to Silent Hill 2? Let me know all of that in the comments below. And if you really enjoyed this video, hit that like button, helps me out a lot and subscribe to Game & Madness channel because much more things are coming in this very channel. Don't want to miss that out. Well, until then, make sure you stay awesome, don't get COVID, and keep on playing games.